This is a walkthrough of the API deployment collection that I've been developing uh, to help me actually bring an API that I've designed to life. So um, I have in a Postman workspace here a products API. So I have the API here where I have the open API definition uh, for the products API. It's just basic CRUD I can add get update and delete uh, my API or my products and then I've got a schema down here for the product and I got a API key security scheme requiring that I have a security scheme and then uh, I've gener uh, generated a handful of collections here for uh, my contract testing for publishing docs and I have mocks published here and I have performance and security testing being worked on but I want to, um, you know, this API is fully designed. Um, it's ready for kind of development and thinking about and use. So I want to go beyond the mock and publish it as an API. And so I've chosen to do that at AWS using a handful of services. I have another one that I did with uh, DynamoDB and AWS Gateway. This one's going to give me a little bit more robust functionality. Um, deploying the API with the API gateway, backing it with a Lambda and a, whoops, and an RDS uh, uh, database. So, um, so in my operations workspace, um, here I have a variety of collections. One of them is my uh, deploy API to AWS. Uh, gateway plus lambda that's the one i want so i'm just going to share that back to my uh products uh workspace and then um because i know i'm, I'm in demo mode i'm gonna um send share the the remove api as well because i know i want to be uh cleaning these up as i'm building them so i can do other demos all right, so um, now I can go back to my products workspace my, for my products API. I've got my base set of collections here, but then now I've got this deploy, which is a, a multi-step uh, way I, that I can deploy this open API. Now, um, whoops, I don't want any changes, cancel. Hmm. Why won't you just go away? There we go. All right, so I have a pretty lengthy uh, process which I'll, I'll walk through, but you can uh, just run this as a monitor as well. It doesn't have to be, or a monitor, excuse me, a runner. Um, I can walk through each of these steps, which I'll do for this demo, kind of peeling back the layers. But normally I would just uh, choose to do it as a runner and I can choose um, this deploy collection. And then I have a, a products environment that I can choose and then I can run it this way and it just runs all the steps as one. So it's a single, single deploy. But I'm gonna walk through it here because um, similar to the, the other deployment collection I have, we need this, um, we need this open API here, right here. We need it in this environment. Um, so we have a, an environment called deploy Lambda and RDS, where we'll be storing all of our, our keys and other things that we're gonna need to, to deploy this API. So, um, this collection here will just let me kind of step through use this open API stored in the environment across each step without having to actually make an API, uh, API call to Postman's API each time I need it. So uh, we're just gonna pull that into the environment. Um, I think I, there it is, I put it in the visualizer. And then I'm gonna uh, create a table function because I need an RDS uh, table created and I can't do that through the API you can only do that through SQL so I need to fire up a, a quick lam a temporary lambda script that's going to do that for me so now my lambda is set up 
and then I'm going to run it um, to create the table for this API. So now I just created a, a table in my database um, and I'm going to remove that function because we don't need it. Um, and then I'm to be able to run each of the lambdas behind individual endpoints. Uh, that's a, a, a MySQL database. I'm running RDS Aurora for the data the database, but it's 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 a you need a MySQL Node.js. Uh, you have a Node.js MySQL dependency for that. So I manage that with layers. I have a layer that is basically everything you need to run an API all the depend Node.js dependencies in a single uh, zipped up file. So it's here, we're gonna load that as a, as a layer that we can use across many lambdas that we're gonna be creating for our, um, to power our API. So there we go, we got a, a layer that we can use. And then um, I'm gonna dynamic, it's gonna dynamically create a, um, an index.js for each lambda that's behind each individual HTTP method in our open API. We have five of them, so I'm gonna have to run this five times. Now, if you run this as a runner, it figures it out all for you how many times it's gotta run for you. Um, here, manually, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta initiate it enough times. So there's one. So basically, it just created five index scripts, one for each of our HTTP methods, put them on Amazon S3 for us to use. And then we're going to do the same, creating a package.json that just basically, you know, because this Lambda script is going to live all by itself, it's got to have a, a proper uh, packaging to go with it, describing what it does. So we're going to create that for each of the five endpoints. Okay. Now we're, um, we have to actually package those up. We have to package those dynamic endpoints, the index.js and the, pack the package.json. We've got to actually zip that up. So we need a Lambda function to do that. So we're going to spin up this, this uh, Lambda function that just basically zips up file folders on Amazon, uh, Amazon S3 and, make, and then writes it back as a zip file that we can then deploy. Um, so basically, I just deployed it, and then I'm gonna run it. Again, I gotta run it five times, because it's gotta build five packages, one for each of our endpoints. Uh, zip file, no such key. Interesting. Okay, that one already exists. Huh. All right, well, I'm gonna keep going. We'll see what that does. See if it chokes it. All right, now I'm actually gonna deploy each Lambda. Five times again. And again, it would figure out all of this for you if, uh, if it was being run with the runner. All right, and then again, I'm gonna prepare the open API just like I did with my uh, DynamoDB one. I'm gonna basically uh, prepare my open API, add the vendor extensions needed to speak to Lambda, um, run the Lambdas, and then I'm actually gonna publish that uh, to uh, the API gateway. Now it's just published there. It's not actually deployed in, in the context of the a AWS API gateway. Now I've got to actually deploy it. I'm going to just deploy it to a development stage. Using the gateway, you can define your own stages, usually like development, staging, production, or you can call them anything else you want. And you can just, I'm using this to deploy to a, a development stage. So now our API is available as, a, as part of a development stage. Um, we can access it. Um, now we, in our open API, we specified that there has to be an API key present for you, for anyone to access this. So to, to, to get an API key, first we need a usage plan for this API that will describe you know, how much of the API people can, can access, what the rate limits are, how much can they grab you know, per day. We have a, a day limit here. 
um, and allows them to burst, but um, we can adjust this after the fact, but every API should have a usage plan. And then we're gonna create an API key for us to actually use our API. But then um, that API key has got to actually be added to uh, that usage plan associated with it to be able to work. So all this is stored in our environment, but we have basically just walked through and deployed um, uh, an API as well as a set of lambdas behind each individual API and an RDS database behind it. So uh, unless something got screwed up, I should be able to actually hit test here and uh, send a test request uh, to our new API. Oh, I got an empty array, that's a good sign. So let's go to add request um, in my body here. I've got a, a test product that I wanna add. Uh, the product test, we'll make it one. Um, and then hit send, get back an identifier. Oops, Postman didn't like something. Go back to my get request, hit send, and I've got a product in the database. So now I've got a, an API that I can create, read, update, and delete uh, my products. Um, it's pretty basic. Um, it's a basic CRUD API, but because it's powered by Lambda, I can add in um, additional functionality. That'll be one of the future uh, deployment collections I do is a is a more one that injects more code in rather than it just being a basic database create read update delete um, and allow you to transform things coming in and transform things going out um, adding another dimension but trying to keep it as automated and standardized as possible so all you got to do is just de develop your open api and then hit run a runner that runs your collection and uh, making it a lot easier and more standardized how you uh, deploy your APIs, really mapping it out step by step and having a single collection that you can use and share with different people within workspaces to actually put, uh, actually be able to deploy their API. And then I've got one here to uh, clean it up because I'm in demo mode and I'll be cleaning things up. But hopefully that helps show how uh, Postman can be used for not just making calls to APIs, can actually be used to uh, design, uh, define and design your APIs and deploy them. So depending on what your infrastructure is, you just kind of queue up all the steps. Hopefully you're using infrastructure that has APIs so that you can uh, orchestrate and uh, deploy exactly what you need using uh, the, the infrastructure you're already uh, putting to work. So um, I'll be showcasing this collection um, as well as my Dynamo, more simpler DynamoDB collection as part of uh, my Postman uh, build and monitor webinar tomorrow morning. Uh, what is it? April 22nd and uh, 9.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. So if you want to see how this collection fits into a wider strategy um, as far as uh, API first, designing your API, how I got this open API, and then the, this part is all about deploying it and then making sure we're monitoring and running tests and, and making sure our API does what it, what it should be doing. Um, you can tune into that. All right.